Hey everyone, Mano back here with another Destiny 2 exotic strategy guide. In today's guide, we're going to be covering how to get the Xenophage machine gun that is tied to a secret quest inside of Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, as well as tied to the new dungeon, the Pit of Heresy. The new machine gun is a hard, heavy hitting machine gun. It is a lot of fun to use. It has a thing called pyrotoxin rounds and it hits for maximum impact. It is doesn't have a lot of rounds in the magazine, but it hits ridiculously hard. You can see in the last clip how easily I took care of that Lost Sector boss. It's a lot of fun to use, so let's go ahead and show you how to get the weapon today. The first thing to do is go grab the Deepening Wake Bounty from Eris Morn. Technically, this doesn't activate the quest, but it, it just helps speed things along. Step number two, you're going to go to the Pyramid Ship Viewing Platform in Sorrows Harbor. This is the area inside of the story where Ikora Ray is actually viewing the Pyramid Ships. It looks like there are some Hive statues and things in the way. A lot of people don't actually know how to get to it. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. What you're going to do is head to the castle here. And and instead of going over to the right hand side where the actual nightfall and strike would be, you're going to head to the left. What you're going to do is make your way through the path here. And what you're going to do is you're not going to go too far down. If you go too far down, you get pulled into that rocky area where you get sucked into the pyramid ship. What you're instead going to do is as soon as you get to the thing called Enduring Abyss on the moon, you're going to look for this green lamp right here before a little bit of a drop off. Turn to the right and you'll see a path on the upper right hand side. Go ahead and follow that and you'll see off on the right hand side, that is where you need to go. For those people who've used the portal and remember the story missions, that's actually where you spawn over there. But what you need to do is go over to this area. You'll see the pyramid ship and you'll see four hive statues. You need to activate all four of the hive statues. It will have a reader called Emerge from the Dark. Once you have done that on all four of the statues, you'll see a text notification that says you have emerged from the dark claim your path you're gonna go ahead and pick up the chest that spawns from that and you'll get the exotic quest called emergence and the journey what you need to do is follow the tips that are on there it says if you were to discover your path you must anchor yourself to light and that's a hint that you need to go to the anchor of light in the Anchor of Light, there is now a solar orb that you can pick up from the first room in the Anchor of Light that I'm going to show you on a map. What you need to do is activate these hive bowls of fire in the Anchor of Light in a certain order. The bowls look like red kind of sharp bowls, and I'll actually show you what it looks like here in just a second. I'm going to deposit a fire right there. It looks like that. The order you need to pick them up in is on screen. The first hive bowl is going to be in the room that you pick up the solar orb. The second one is going to be on the roof of a building in the Anchor of Light. The third one is going to be inside of a building. The fourth one is going to be up on the second level. The fifth one is going to be up on a ramp. And the sixth one is going to be on top of the dome. If you do it correctly, it will look exactly like this. This is going to be the path that you follow. So that was the first bowl that I lit here. We're going to make our way here. You will see that you have a timer. If you run out, that means that your bowls will be extinguished and you'll have to do it again in the correct order. I come over here. This is number two. I'm going to make my way over to this small little building that is kind of hidden in the rock here. Turn to the right and you will see the third hive bowl right here. Next up, we're going to go to the fourth one. You can approach this one of two ways. You can actually climb up on the right side of the scaffolding, or you can just make this jump that I make right here. I climb up onto these little fallen crates, and I leap up to the second level. I light that actually right there, and then I move up to the ramp that kind of goes at an angle. Right at the tip top of the ramp, you will see the fifth hive bowl and finally we need to go over to the round building in the anchor of light go up on top of the building and deposit the light there once you have done that your timer will go away and there will be a marker on screen that you will need to go to it says you will are ready to emerge from the dark what you're going to do is move towards the actual diamond you can see i'm looking around for just a second and then i find my way over to where i need to deposit it it's over next to the room where you pick up the solar orb for the first time once you've done that you've done the anchor of light portion of this quest 
What you will need to do next is you will need to do what's called Pathfinder. That is where you need to find the fragments from the four lost sectors on the moon. To get the fragments, you'll need to correctly solve the puzzles at the end of the four lost sectors on the moon. If you don't know where those four lost sectors are, they're tied to the four areas on the moon. In the Hellmouth, we have K1 Crew Quarters. In Archer's Line, we have K1 Logistics. In the Anchor of Light, we have K1 Communion. In Sorrow's Harbor, we have K1 Revelation. Once you kill all of the enemies, there will be a door that will open that will take you to the exit, and there will be a 3x3 three three hive puzzle. What you'll need to do is match up the symbol that is at the top with everything at the bottom. You basically want to make sure that they all line up and are exactly the same. Here, you want to make sure you don't use any explosive, unstoppable, or anti-barrier rounds. You need to make sure you follow the pattern exactly as I show it on screen and wait for the puzzle to respawn. In K1 Logistics, you shoot top left, bottom left, the center, and then the mid right. Once you do that, all the symbols will line up and they will all be the same as they are in the top and a chest will appear. At that moment, you'll pick up the fragment and it says your path is coming into focus. Let's move on over into K1 Communion. Again, once you complete the Lost Sector and kill all the enemies, there will be a door that will open. Go ahead and follow that to the end where you actually see the Hive Puzzle. I recommend using like a hand cannon or a scout rifle for this. Again, no explosive rounds are unstoppable because that can mess up your puzzle. In K1 Communion, you're going to shoot the bottom left, the bottom right, the top middle symbol, and then one more time, the top middle. With that, again, go ahead and pick up your chest. Let's move on over to K1 Revelation. This one is a little bit of a longer lost sector, as well as a little bit of a longer puzzle. Again, don't use any explosive rounds. Anti-barrier are unstoppable because that will mess up the puzzle. What we're gonna do is shoot left, middle, center, and center, left, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, center, and right, middle. I'll show you all of that on screen if you wanna follow along. Again, make sure you pick up the chest so you can proc the quest line. Finally, K1 Crew Quarters is the longest of the Hive puzzles, so let's go ahead and go through that now. Mid left, top right, bottom right, bottom right, top middle, Top middle, bottom middle, and then you're going to shoot the center three times. Once that is done, all of the symbols in the puzzle will match, but they won't correspond to the one up at the top. When you get to this spot, you will need to shoot the puzzle like you're reading a book top to bottom, left to right. So you shoot all of the symbols so that they all basically move on to the next symbol. So you can see I'm basically just shooting all nine in order. I'm going left to right and then top to bottom. We're gonna do the third row right here. At this point, they still will not match. You'll need to do that one more time. So you shoot all nine of them one time. You'll see they move on to the next symbol. You do the exact same thing one more time. So you're gonna shoot all nine of them twice once you've done the center three times. Again, if you have any problems with this, just go back in the video, watch it again. If you'd like to write it down, that also works. But I find just thinking about using that first step for the first opening set, get them all matching, and then move on to this. Once you've done that, the chest will then appear and you will move on to the next quest step. 
The next quest step is completing the Altar of Sorrow boss and killing nightmares. It's the first bounty that you picked up when you started. You need to kill a tier 3 or above boss in the Altar of Sorrow area. Once you've done that, you're going to go back to Eris and get access to the Pit of Heresy dungeon. I'm not going to spoil anything with the actual dungeon. I'm going to have a flawless solo guide here in a little bit, but I will tell you, after the first encounter, you'll come to a wall of doors. What you're going to do is head to the door that is marked on screen. It's basically up to and over to, two to the left. If you try to go in any of the other doors, you will get punched and killed, and while that is very fun to see, we're trying to get you your exotic as quickly as possible. Follow the platforms here on up to the location that you need to go. And what's actually pretty cool is that there is a marker outside of the door that you can look at. There is a bunch of high writing on the ground where you are at the area. You can see I jump right over it there. When you look inside of the door, there will be one last little symbol that will reveal your path's end. That will take you to one of the final quest steps, which is called Discovery. What you're going to need to do is find the Path Ends location, which is essentially inside the Tunnels of Sorrow. After the Pariah Ogre encounter, follow the tunnels all the way over to the left side until you see a big giant green chasm with bones. There should be a path down below that you can follow down below to an area where there looks to be like a glyph and a circular kind of platform with a bunch of hive writing on it. What you'll do then is you'll actually start that. You'll hit the trigger for that and three platforms will come up. It will show a green light over on the far platform. You need to grab that and then run to the opposite side of the dungeon. So if this is the left side of the dungeon, you're going to go all the way over back into the right. It's going to look like the basically the castle, the red castle that you see. You're gonna look for the hive writing, go to the door next to it, and light the two hive bowls that are there. Once you've ignited the flame on both the right and the left side of the door, it will give you access to the final boss. You'll need to kill Volmar the Tempted, the wizard, to actually complete this quest. However, she is immune to all attacks. You have to follow some very simple mechanics to actually do damage to her. In the room right before the boss, in the antechamber, there are going to be four hive symbols, and they will line up with different elements. There will be one for arc, solar, void, as well as kinetic. They will show you a symbol on screen, plus the actual element that is actually associated with it. What you need to do is look on the left side of your screen. You will see one of four buffs or debuffs. There will be Thunderous Dread, Abysmal Dread, Fiery Dread, or Neutral Dread. Those correspond to the symbols that you see in the boss room. During the boss fight, what you'll need to do is pick up a light that is in the center and deposit it to one of the locations that matches the symbol of your buff. So for me on screen right now, I have Thunderous Dread. I need to go to the symbol that is associated with arc. So I move over here to that area. As soon as I've done that, I can do damage with the element that corresponds to my vengeance. So for me, I have thunderous vengeance on the left side of my screen. I can do damage to the boss with arc damage of any type. For ease of use, I have made this map detailing how the boss room works. In the center is the ball of fire, and then the four symbols are located in the different corners of the room. However, there are two floors. There's a top floor and a bottom floor. The easiest way to figure out where you need to go is to look at the symbol that you've got, plus looking at the dread that you have. If you have abysmal dread, you're going to void. If you're going to fiery dread, you're going to solar. If you're going to thunderous dread, you're going to arc. If you're going to kinetic you're going to neutral dread so follow the map that is here if you need to pause the video at this time to use that feel free it makes it a much more simple fight unlike many of the bosses inside of destiny volmar is not very tanky the biggest thing about her is the fact that when you try and go to the middle and when you have one of the solar orbs that you pick up from the middle and the lights she really does focus quite a bit of her damage on you. You can see how much damage I take from just a couple of shots. She does some massive damage here, so be very careful in the battle. Once she is dead, you'll return to Eris Morn with the Hive Bug. She'll tell you a little bit more about Omar, which is actually really cool that it's tied to that. You get to read a little bit more about the story. I won't take that away from you, so you can actually just see that you pick up the piece called Finality 
And once you've done that, you have earned your Xenophage light machine gun. It will come at 950 at its highest. It will not be able to go any higher, but this thing is a blast to use. So anyway, folks, that is the exotic strategy guide for today. I hope it really helped you out, especially the map and the symbols and everything else that you need to know. If it did help you out, Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you enjoyed about this. Let me know when you pick this up if you really do enjoy using the LMG. If you need help, make sure you stop by twitch.tv slash manodestra777. We do lots of raid help, comp help, exotic quest help, all those other things there. We would love to see you come on over there. Join the Manoverse Discord down below. If you liked something in this video, a positive rating is greatly appreciated. Hit that subscribe button for more Destiny content. Guardians, good hunting out there, and I'll see you next time in the universe of destiny.